So in this video, I am going to discuss about this particular question which came in GATE 2019. Uh, if you are the aspirant, you can easily recognize this. So in my personal opinion, this is uh, one of the tricky questions and it is a very good question because if you don't know the mechanism, uh, you cannot predict the answer. So let me uh, do the mechanism for you. So welcome to Chemistry Lover and you are watching your favorite channel. So, you can see first you have to look it look into the reagents what are the reagents given carefully and uh, what are the equivalents because these two equivalents which is written for this ethyl acetoacetate is very important you will see it later and you can see two equivalents of this ethyl acetoacetate is given along with that formaldehyde is given and it is treated with sodium ethoxide in ethanol and also it is given so what will be the product so, the first step you can very easily predict is this is called the active methylene group. So, your base sodium oxide that will do. So, actually, this deformation which is so on this side. So, it will produce this phenolic. And now you have formaldehyde, right? So, this phenolic will attack on formaldehyde to give you this ok OET here you have OH and if you are familiar with the aldol condensation reaction the very similar thing will happen here that is a second deprotonation will give you this particular enolase here we have this OAT, sorry, and now finally here it will be, this is the E1CB elimination reaction, right? So this E1CB elimination reaction will be this, here we will have the double bond. So this particular reaction which I just did to get this um, alkene, so this is this is called the Novenagel reaction. It is a very popular name reaction. Now, uh, here is the importance of the second equivalent of the ethyl acetoacetate. So, the second ethyl acetoacetate can form another enolate like the same way. So, we can write like this. So, the second uh, ethyl acetoacetate it is now form this enolate. And now it can do this Michael addition. So this is the Michael addition. And out of this Michael addition, what do you get? So you basically get this one. So here we have this OET. Here. So you, what you get is this. So here you have this O. We have this OED over here, we have another carbon group, and here the methyl group. So this you will get, and then this enolization, this enolization will eventually give you this product. You have this COED. Here you will have. I just I'm just rotating the structure. So this and this. So this you will get. Now what next can happen? So you have ethoxide uh, anion in your reaction medium which is base. So that ethoxide anion can easily take a proton from here and that will basically produce this enolate. Okay. So if the ethoxide take proton from there it will produce this enolate. Now this enolate when pushed there it will attack here to give you this cyclized product, you can see this cyclized product you will get. So, here you will have the carbonyl, this carbonyl, here you will have this OET, here you have the methyl and the OH, and here you can see another OET, right? So, this is the thing. You will get or I just did a mistake 
sorry i just did a mistake that is one carbon so you can see this carbon is there so this carbon is this carbon so actually the methyl group will be here here will be the oh and here you will have the oh group right and now you can see uh, from here again a deprotonation can take place so that will be the end of it so we have this ethoxide so that will basically do deprotonation from here so it will give you this enolate O minus so why the deprotonation is taking place from this because you can see if you look carefully, you can see these centers also are, uh, are close to this carbonyl group, but these carbonyl groups are basically ester, and this is the keto. So keto is more electron deficient. So uh, this as uh, this particular hydrogen is more acidic, and that's why deprotonation will take place from here. And it is fruitful also because it can give this one C elimination to give you this. Sorry, so here you will have this, right? So this will be the product, right? So you will think this will be the product. Now this particular product is not given in the uh, question, right? So this particular post, uh, product is not given. What was given is this ester group was missing. So that means somehow decarboxylation is taking place here. Now, what is the mechanism for this decarboxylation? So up to this step, you can see it is very familiar to you. Uh, it's very easy, but this decarboxylation step is not clear because for uh, although this this type of esters which are bitter to this carbonyl group, they can easily undergo decarboxylation. Uh, but when uh, it is first hydrolyzed, so if it is hydrolyzed and then F it is given, so you can see by this mechanism, by this mechanism, it can easily undergo the decarboxylation. But here, you don't have given any condition for the ester hydrolysis. So, it will remain as this. So, what is the uh, mechanism is there? So, for that, you have to know the mechanism and this particular ester which is, which uh, is formed here is called a Higman star. It is very important uh, organic uh, organic reagent. You can uh, Google it. Okay. So the actual thing is, so this step will not occur. Instead, the base will deprotonate this OH to OH minus, and this O minus now can attack on this carbonyl group, this ester group and kick off this OET minus so that will basically give you this so here you have oxygen here this and now you can see so this O like this so this thing you will get now you can you can ask that why this O minus is attacking on this carbon will and not here so this is because you can see if it attacks on here, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, this 4 member ring which is not favorable but here this, you can see this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it is a 6 member ring and you can visualize this thing like this, so it will actually look like this, if you draw it carefully it will look like this, so which is a nice structure, so there will be some carbon groups in some places but it is a nice structure so it can happen and if it attacks on this carbonyl group, it will not give any fruitful reaction. So only fruitful reaction can happen when it attacks on this ester group by kicking off this OET minus. So this intermediate will be formed. Now the hydrolysis of ester is quite easier because you can see now what can happen. So this this is a bridged position. So no decarboxylate and no uh, proton abstraction can take place from here. And this this is also a uh, say you can see the bridgehead position, so no uh, de, uh, deprotonation can take place from here. So you are left out with only this position and this position. Now compared to this position, this is more acidic because it is close to this keto. So if deprotonation takes place from here, you will have this enolate, right? 
and now if this inlet push there, what you will get? You will get opening of this. So that will eventually give you this. So here we will have this methyl, this carbonyl, and now it is one. So here we have this O minus. Now it is remained as O minus and it may be protonated in the medium although it is basic medium but ethanol molecule is there so this protonation can happen and when you heat what will happen so this decarboxylation will take place basically this decarboxylation will take place and here you will have this O minus finally it will tautomerize to give you this product or you don't need this protonation it can just go like this to give you this product. So this intermediate is very important here. If you don't know about this intermediate, you will be confused and you cannot answer. So that's all. Um, I hope that you will like the video. So if you're new in this channel, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.